Kristen Aguirre is out and about this morning, not in Istanbul. No, she is live at Mill Creek picking out some pumpkins. I sure am. I am here trying to find the perfect pumpkin. And with me now is Teresa Rogi, owner of Mill Creek. How long have you guys had this uh, pumpkin growing? Uh, we've been growing pumpkins for probably close to 20 years, about 17 years here in Quincy. Um, we have about five acres of pumpkins, not just here, but we have a satellite field that we rent. Um, and we've been having kids coming out for lots of times. So. And you guys have kind of a unique way that people can come out here and pay for their pumpkins. Absolutely. We're not always here because as farmers we have lots of things to do and people can uh, come on out. They can even come to the field, uh, compare what they see uh, from what they've picked out to what we've got in front of the shed and that will tell them what they need to pay and they can just pay the honesty box inside the shed. So they just kind of compare the pumpkins to how it's getting paid. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna run out of here with like three pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> and so when people come here, how do you pick out the perfect pumpkin? Well, a lot of it depends on what they're gonna do it for. So some people want pumpkins for cooking. So, you know, there's, there's most of our pumpkins are actually edible. Um, other people wanna pick them out for whatever design that they have in mind. Um, this past weekend, we had a couple of boys. They got some of the biggest, greenest pumpkins you've ever seen. And I think that uh, vampires or witches or something of that nature was going to be uh, taking place. Um, others, they like the uh, small ones and um, it just, anywhere in between. It just depends on what you want to do with it. And we have three pumpkins here, so maybe would these be used? These are actually pretty, pretty good yeah. size. A lot of people, they like the uh, shorter squat ones, you know, and of course it depends on what it is that you're going to use. Um, I like them because they're nice and round. Other people like the taller ones. Um, you know, most people want a real good stem on them, although one of the newest crazes is, is instead of cutting off the top of the pumpkin, you actually cut off the bottom of the pumpkin and um, in the same circle, and then you can just stick the pumpkin on top of oh. the, the lighting it, uh, the lighting. Right, right. Right. Oh, okay, great. Well, I think this is the best pumpkin. I picked it out when we first came out here. I love this pumpkin. Um, coming up later in the show, we are actually going to show you some things that you could do with your pumpkin, like carve it. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Oh, excellent. I, I am so pleased because my wife and I have tried to get our little one out there the mm -hmm. past few weeks and just haven't found time. We, we hope to go this weekend, mm -hmm. and I'm glad to see the pumpkins aren't picked over. They still look great. Yeah, three good ones. Yeah, there's a ton here, oh. and you can take whatever you want and just Pay the honesty box. I yes. will be more honest than you, Miss Three Pumpkins. <laughs> you probably will. I'm going to take like five pumpkins when Teresa leaves. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've told uh, everybody in the tri-states, that's a great idea, Kristen. Oh. <laughs> Erie kicking off Halloween week, which starts uh, technically today right here in KHQA this morning. Mm -hmm. She is live at a pumpkin patch. Kristen, have you found your perfect pumpkin yet? And you oh, I have found my perfect pumpkin. It's this bad boy right here, perfectly circle, just exactly what I look for every year in getting the pumpkin. Pumpkin. I am here at Mill Creek at the pumpkin patch, and with me now is Teresa Rogi, owner. And we're going to talk about once you pick out that perfect pumpkin, how do you keep squirrels away from it? Well, squirrels are really difficult because they really like the fruit. Um, some of the ways that you can uh, keep it, uh, squirrels away is to have something else outside. So for instance, you could have some other pumpkins that are further away than, than the ones that you want to keep, or you could have bird seed or corn or something like that. Some people are spraying like, uh, a solution of like cayenne pepper, cayenne pepper mm -hmm. on the pumpkins themselves, or others, uh, they have the, the uh, uh, owls that you can put out that are close by it because squirrels are naturally afraid of owls. So squirrels like to eat. <laughs> Is there a way that you can preserve your pumpkin to stay longer? Oh, absolutely. Um, when Once you've carved it, there's a couple of different things that you can end up doing. Is one of the things is is to slather the parts that you've cut with Vaseline. That can help. Um, that'll help to keep the moisture. Other things that you can do are to um, uh, spray it with a bleach water solution and uh, the best way that um, many people find is to actually submerge your entire pumpkin into a bucket full of water and bleach and then when you're ready to use it bring it on out. One of the things that you want to avoid is, is a lot of people they use real candles in them and the candles actually that heat it breeds uh, diseases so instead of using a real candle you can actually use um, the the uh, little lights that you can put on the inside. 
All right, perfect. So now that you know how to pick out your favorite pumpkin, you know how to preserve it, coming up later, we are gonna show you how to carve it. So make sure you stay tuned for that. All right, just uh, be careful and don't cut yourself, Kristen. Yes. Don't want you in the ER with some stitches or Dangerous. something for this morning. Kristen Aguirre is out and about this morning, checking out something cool as well. Yeah, she's got some pumpkins. How's it going, Kristen? At Mill Creek, trying to pick out the perfect pumpkin at the pumpkin patch here. So we've already showed you what you need to look for when picking out your pumpkin and how to preserve it. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. I'm with Andrea. Edgar, Edgar, Andrea Edgar here, and she's going to show us how to carve some pumpkins. She has this amazing one here. Ed Andrea, how long did it take you to make that one? That one has only about four hours of work invested in it. Over the last couple of years, I've gotten a little bit quicker with it, refined my method, and um, with the help of the World Wide Web, I've seen what a lot of others have done, and it's cut down on my carving time substantially. What? How did you get into this? It was because, honestly, I can't carve a standard jack-o'-lantern with a regular knife. It was a huge pain for me, and they always looked extremely generic. And so when I came across the website called ExtremePumpkins.com, I looked at some of the different ways that they approached carving it with different different materials, um, and I used the Dremel tool personally, and that just opened up a myriad of ways that I could actually come up with some pretty interesting designs. So is this kind of like a business for you now or how does this work? It's still just oh, a hobby. Goodness. No, it's just a hobby. I enjoy this time of year. Fall is my favorite season. And with the variety of pumpkins that Mill Creek Farms has over the years, I've I've found that I've got great results out of them. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you pick out the perfect pumpkin that you use to carve? Well, one of the first things that I look for is appropriate size. Uh, if it's uniform, if when it is st sitting on the ground, if it, if it, you know, I don't want it to necessarily lean forward or lean back too much, what's going to give me the best canvas to start carving into? Mm -hmm. At the same time, I prefer pumpkins that have a smoother face. It's a lot easier when you're trying to determine thickness of the pumpkin and an even carving surface because when you do, um, shade levels essentially as I'm, I'm painting with light is allowing the amount of light to come through on the depth of the pumpkin mm -hmm. uh, you want that you want an even surface not only on the inside but on the outside so it makes it easier to determine how far you need to carve into the pumpkin so this one this one has a I would think a bumpy surface, but is this one relatively smooth? Um, this one is quite a bumpy surface. I was going for size on this pumpkin, so I sacrificed gotcha. smoothness, and uh, it made it a bit more of a challenge, but at the same time, I'm always looking to try something different and to challenge myself with, with yes. something as quirky as this, so it was um, it was nice, though, dealing with it. So this one right here, is this is this one a smooth one? Yes, that one I would definitely um, definitely use as long as I kept the design to where it it would show on the face of it, you know, to where you wouldn't have to tilt it or anything. Right, right, right. So okay, so when you get started after you picked out your pumpkin, what is the next thing that you do? Uh, the first thing I have to do is make sure I have all my tools in order because when I start this, I want to make sure I at least get certain parts of it um, done all at one time. So my first step is to cut off the top and then go on the inside and even out the interior carving surface. So what tools do we have here that you use? So I use just a regular knife, sharp knife, and I go ahead and cut off the top. On the inside, I found that these pottery loop tools there are a couple bucks for a pack of five at any of the craft stores are really effective at actually thinning out the layer of it comfortably. All right, Andrea, well, coming up later in the show, we're going to keep looking at those tools, and she's going to show us how to dig into that pumpkin. That's my least favorite part is the goopy, the grimy. Oh, I love that part. Ugh. <laughs> let's, see if she, let's see if Kristen can, Kristen can carve a self-portrait of herself yeah. in a pumpkin face. I think she can. Oh, yeah, it's, gonna, it's just going to have, like, pointy eyes and, like, jackal teeth. <laughs> <laughs> And All with right. me now is Andrea A. Edgar, who is a pumpkin carver extraordinaire. Look at this amazing pumpkin she carved, and she's giving us some tips. So our tools, we talked a little bit about our tools really quick. What tools do we use? Um, regular kitchen knife or whatever sharp knife to cut open the top. Go ahead and if you want to get some looping tools that are actually in the pottery department or any craft store, these are good for getting an, an even thickness to your pumpkin um, carving surface. And then this, uh, just a regular pumpkin scraper that you can get in any of those kits, 
just to even everything out on the inside. One thing I do find helpful is if you have some sort of sharp, long object of some sort, you can use it to compare the depths um, of the thickness and to make sure that that's as even as you can get. I mean, looking at these, this these look like art tools. You are a true artist. Um, so. The first thing people do, they gotta get get all the stuff out inside, mm -hmm. right? So what what do they need to do? Um, not be afraid of pumpkin guts. What you're seeing right <laughs> now is actually an example of um, a pumpkin starting to rot from the initial. After I carved it the first time, I only had half of the pumpkin submerged. So um, what ended up happening is it let the air into the pumpkin at the t on the back side, which fortunately wasn't the carving surface, but what happens over the course of this pumpkin is two weeks old now, is that it starts to deteriorate. So it's really important that if you're planning on, on um, making this out of multiple carving trips, that you keep your pumpkin fully submerged in that bleach water solution and, um, and it'll keep it moist and and happy. And so we talked about that that bleach uh, solution earlier with Teresa about preserving your pumpkin. So make sure you get in there, get all your gook out and line it inside with Vaseline and use that bleach solution. Coming up, we are going to take a look at actually some of Andrea's art, other artwork and show you how easy it is to paint or to carve a pumpkin. Hmm, very interesting. Kristen well, Aguirre is live at a pumpkin patch this morning. We go from hurricanes to pumpkins. Yes, how's it going, Kristen? It is going good. I am here with Andrea Edgar, who is a pumpkin carving extraordinaire. She's been telling us what we need to do to carve the perfect pumpkin. So we already got the gook out. Now it's time. How do we pick out what we want our pumpkin to look like? Find some inspiration. Figure out what you want your subject of your pumpkin to be. For this one, it's pretty obvious, Mill Creek Farms. <laughs> I went ahead and found a picture of a barn. I took it into Photoshop, reduced the color level layers to where each layer corresponds to a carving depth. From there, you take tracing paper. If you aren't able to freehand it, um, tape it onto it, then tape it onto the front of the pumpkin. And you can see that that's what I did with this one. And then from there, you go ahead and have your outline. You can go ahead and start carving. You start carving. So Andrew's going to actually show us a little bit how she does carving. She does a lot of her stuff freehand. Um, it's amazing how it, it really is an artwork. You know, it goes into their Photoshop, stenciling, and, and all these great stuff. She actually has some other amazing pictures here that she's done. She has these cute, I don't know if Neil can get that without the glare. Look at these cute little dogs. She's actually even done, ah, the wind. She's actually done people, that's her dad. They're just so amazing. Andra, how long did these take to do? The first pumpkin took me about six hours, and then from there, um, between six and eight hours, the dog pumpkin was by far the longest, but <laughs> it was a lot enjoyable um, being able to actually carve a Yorkie. <laughs> Well, if you're not maybe into carving pumpkins, you can always paint them, right, Teresa? Absolutely. Uh, on Saturday, the 27th, we're going to have the uh, QU uh, Nick Myers and the QU Golf and Tennis teams out, and they will be helping you to paint your pumpkins for free. Um, just buy your pumpkin, and they'll help you paint it. All right, so make sure to check out Mills Creek to find your pumpkin, and you can either carve it or paint it. Impressive. What a Very. nice talent to have. Yes, I'm not. I know. Good. She's amazing. Painter or carver. Oh, me <laughs> Mine is going to have lopsided triangle eyes and, and just a standard it, it will be half a moon for terrifying jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> well, 